Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine, reporting to you from Unified Wine and Grape Symposium here at the Sacramento Convention Center. One of the key features is the State of the Industry Reports, and one of those speakers was Jeff Bitter from Allied Grape Growers, and wanted to know, kind of in a nutshell, what's the current state of the wine grape industry in California? Well, what we talked about today was kind of a, a changing tide in the business, and some of that was really brought on this year by a large crop. And although Central Valley growers may, might not have felt that way, uh, overall in the state it was about 10% up over last year and over the about the average of the last six or seven years. So there's more inventory in the system. And, and at this same time, wine shipment growth has been slowing, particularly at the upper end of the market. So you have this situation where we've kind of got this ample supply, wine shipments are slowing. And so uh, you, can, you can sense a change in the dynamics of the buyer-seller um, transactions and relationships. And so uh, that was talked a lot about today. What, what, where do we stand? What are we going to do? How do we address this issue of, of wine shipments, you know, uh, kind of flattening out? How do we appeal to the next generation consumer? And so there's not a whole lot to report in terms of the wine grape market because there's just not a lot of transactions at this point in the, in the season. Uh, we'll have more to report on that as the spring, hopefully spring and summer comes along. But I can tell you this, in terms of regionally, the San Joaquin Valley has actually experienced more market demand and more uh, transactions to this point of the year than other areas of the state. And I think that's just a reflection of the, the inventories that exist. Most of our inventory issues are, uh, are associated with coastal wine grapes, Cabernet and Pinot Noir in particular, as we see increased production of those two varieties. And so uh, what you have is the buyers that buy interior grapes are actually interested in securing that supply longer term because uh, you don't want the negativity of other regions of the state to affect you uh, with regard to uh, having uh, any potential oversupply. So, uh, whereas other regions might have affordable grapes uh, as well, uh, those Central Valley buyers are looking to the Central Valley to sustain them over the long term at the price points they need to buy at. And so the market has been, you know, kind of hit and miss with regard to that. Again, if you're in the coast, probably not a whole lot going on. You're probably not getting, you know, a lot of phone calls from your buyer. Uh, but in the valley, it's, it's not exactly the same situation. So uh, what it essentially is going to happen is we're going to wait until the crop is, is apparent. And that might be May or June or whatever. I, I, I suspect that's what's going to happen in the wine grape market this year. There probably just won't be a lot of activity until people can see what the crop looks like. Right, and, and talking about that too as far as the, going back to actual results of this year's crop, the crush, do you think that the report's going to be delayed this year because of... Yeah, good question. So the state publishes the preliminary grape crush report on February 10th every year right. uh, because of the government shutdown for an extended period of time. Uh, that office has been back opened. It, it goes the, That reporting goes through the National Ag Statistics Service. That office has been temporarily reopened for three weeks. But the reality is, is that it delayed the report. And so we don't know exactly when that report's going to come out. Uh, we're supposed to learn next week what the timing of that is. Got it. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thanks for the update. Read more about these things. Stay current on industry trends in wine grapes in American Vineyard Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.